Hey, so what were you doing in April of 2020? I'm going to guess you, like many others, were sheltering at home, watching a lot of YouTube, and wishing your favorite restaurants, stores, and theme parks would reopen. Do you want to know how Richard McGuire, a.k.a. the Southern Pirate Outdoors, was spending his pandemic? He was infiltrating Disney's Discovery Island, an abandoned property in the middle of Bay Lake that hadn't hosted guests since 1999, where he hoped to stay and explore and document his findings for a week. The story did not end well for Richard. We're talking trip security cameras, sheriff's deputies, helicopters, and a full-blown manhunt that's worthy of its own full video, if not a full-length feature film. So why am I talking about Richard McGuire? It's because he might be the most absolute batshit example I've ever heard of a much larger and often saner phenomenon known as Disney Urban Exploring. It's the Disney-fied version of the more general trend of urban exploration of hidden or abandoned areas. And it's become something of an obsession among many fans. I'm Clover with Cloverloop, and I'm about to answer the question, why are people so obsessed with Disney Urban Exploring? Before we delve into Disney urban exploring, let's talk a little bit about urban exploring in general. Simply put, urban exploring is all about the exploration of abandoned man-made structures or hidden places within man-made environments. The appeal of these environments isn't new. It's a fascination of human nature. As humans, we love abandoned things. We've even created words to describe this attraction. For example, Ruinenlust is a German word that describes the feeling of being drawn to abandoned places and crumbling buildings from the past. From some vantage points, it represents an emotional reaction to the cult of modernism and a rebellious declaration of the value of the past. Plus, some of these places are just super spooky and cool. The seed for my own Ruinenlust was planted decades ago when my parents took me on a tour of the Seattle Underground a network of tunnels, basements, and staircases in the Pioneer Square neighborhood of Seattle. These subterranean passages were once located at ground level when the city was built in the mid-19th century, but after a massive fire decimated the neighborhood, the new streets were simply rebuilt on top of the old ones. I also recently had the opportunity to do some of my own urban exploration inside of the abandoned famous bar department store building in downtown St. Louis, Missouri. It was creepy, fascinating, and thrilling, like some kind of sci-fi, future post-apocalyptic hellscape come to life. These messy parts of our consumer culture are usually hidden from view until they can be gutted, discarded, and rebuilt shiny and new. So spending time among the decaying remnants of a place intended for humans but no longer inhabited by them can feel disconcerting, but also liberating. Without much experience to contextualize what we're seeing, abandoned places can elicit feelings of both fear and opportunity, which is an experience not often found elsewhere. When you take an experience as unique and as powerful as this, and then layer on the fascination and exclusivity of Disney, something even more powerful is born. Disney urban exploring isn't new. However, people didn't really hear a lot of the stories behind these adventures until the internet and social media propelled these explorers and their exploits into the public eye. A perfect example of this would be a couple of OG Disney urban explorers, Dave Hoot Gibson Ensign and Ed Thunder Chief Barlow Jr., better known as Hoot and Chief. Back in the 1990s, these two Disney superfans were obsessed with the Old Horizons attraction at Epcot. When they learned it might be shutting down, they decided to document as much of it as they could. Horizons took guests on an animatronic-based trip into the year 2086 with a little car that rode on a track through various scenes. The way Hoot and Chief decided to go exploring on Horizons was bold, but incredibly simple. They simply hopped off the cars when they couldn't be observed, and then sneaked around in areas where they knew they wouldn't be seen. They got to know the backstage of the ride so well that they could spend pretty much as much time as they wanted creeping around and documenting the scenes and animatronics up close, which they did extensively right up until Horizons closed permanently in 1999. That said, their exploits didn't really get much attention until 2009 when they started uploading their footage and adventures to the internet. 
There's now even a mini documentary about their exploits out there entitled Remain Seated, Please, The Hooten Chief Story. And I really recommend checking it out. It's good. Hooten Chief were most famous for their exploration of Horizons, but they went off-roading on other Disney attractions over the years, too, including sneaking into Splash Mountain while it was under construction. Their footage of the ride's unfinished skeleton and shadowy tunnels became an early online sensation, sparking a curiosity about the hidden side of Disney. But really, Hoot and Chief were just the beginning, and Horizons and unfinished rides were just the tip of the iceberg when it came to Disney urban exploring destinations, and not even the most alluring ones. Other popular targets for Disney urban exploring over the years have included the famous Utilidors, those underground passageways that connect all the various lands of Magic Kingdom and allow cast members to easily get from place A to place B without being hassled by guests. When a crop of bold Disney guests realized that there were doors in the theme park hidden in plain sight that granted access to this underground city, some of them decided to discreetly help themselves to a peak, and plenty brought cameras with them. Then there's River Country, Disney's first water park, which became a magnet for explorers after it closed in 2001. After its closure, River Country was pretty much just abandoned by Disney to be reclaimed by the surrounding nature. Since it was a short walk away from the Fort Wilderness Resort, urban explorers were able to fairly easily make their way past fences and into the complex, and the footage they captured of the decaying water park was absolute internet gold. But the most daring of Disney urban explorers didn't stop there. Once inside River Country, you were all the closer to Discovery Island, the abandoned island attraction sitting right in the middle of Bay Lake. The island opened as Treasure Island on April 8, 1974, as a place to observe wildlife, and it was later renamed Discovery Island when it was recognized as a zoological park. Discovery Island closed to the public on April 8, 1999 exactly 25 years after its opening. Since then, it's been seen as the crown jewel of Disney urban exploring, and rightfully so. It is, after all, an island, so you can't just stroll over and start snapping photos. But for those few brave souls willing to traverse the supposedly alligator-infested waters of Bay Lake, the footage of this abandoned attraction is truly astounding like something out of a Jurassic Park movie after the humans have been run off. So why do we know about all of these urban explorers and their exploits? Why, it's all due to the power of the internet and social media, which offers fame and, well, not always fortune, to those willing to go and document places that others will not. And that leads us to the question of the ethics of all of this. Is Disney urban exploring just harmless fun, or is it something more sinister? Does it represent trespassing, or in some cases, even vandalism? The community is divided on this issue. Some urban explorers defend their actions as historical preservation, arguing that they document what Disney won't, and that that's important. Others counter that it disregards private property and carries with it the potential for damage. This becomes increasingly the case as more and more people hop on the urban exploring bandwagon for a particular attraction or off-limits area. Now, let me be clear. Urban exploring in nearly every case is trespassing from a legal perspective. You're going where the property owner doesn't want you to go. But exactly how egregious an ethical violation people consider this to be seems to have a lot to do with the person, where they're going, and why. The ethics debate flared up in 2020 in a bigger way than ever when Richard McGuire was arrested after being found living on Discovery Island for an extended period in the pandemic. More about him in a few minutes, but in short, this incident fueled questions about where the line exists between curious exploration and unlawful occupation, and in many ways unleashed a new level of Disney diligence when it came to cracking down on this unlawful behavior. These days, Disney Urban Explorer videos are fewer and further in between. They still crop up, to be sure, but as with any good internet sensation, these things wax and wane. Especially when Disney starts putting more security in place on urban exploration hotspots. So that begs the question, which Disney Urban Explorers have left the greatest marks? Over the years, a few figures have become synonymous with Disney Urban Exploration. The OGs, Hoot and Chief, tend to be regarded more in a documentarian light than some of the explorers that followed them. 
Part of that might be because, yes, there's literally a documentary about them, but another part of that is likely because they waited so very long, more than a decade, to even release their footage from their exploration of Horizons and other attractions. Sure, YouTube didn't even exist at the time that they were capturing their footage, so that's part of it. But the other part is that they seemed genuinely concerned about burning bridges with Disney, a brand that they deeply loved. Then there are others like Jake Williams, aka Bright Sun Films, and Seth Lawless. These folks made a name for themselves with their incredibly captivating footage of places like River Country and Discovery Island. These two are also interesting in that they're not just Disney urban explorers, but rather professional photographers and videographers who have built their careers by exploring and documenting abandoned places. And then there's Matt Sanswa. If there was ever such a thing as a bad boy of Disney urban exploring, Matt is it. At this point, Matt is as famous for receiving not one, but two lifetime bans from Disney parks as he is for his actual explorations. But his explorations themselves were daring, to say the least. He's made videos of multiple abandoned and defunct areas of Disney, including Discovery Island, River Country, Disney Quest, Cranium Command, and more. He's also gone backstage after park hours to film Expedition Everest and the Matterhorn Basketball Court. And then right before the park shut down for the pandemic, he broke into Magic Kingdom and climbed through the tracks of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. In short, Sanswa is pretty high on Disney's shit list. They know who he is, they don't want him around, so any additional videos that he captures are very much in the context of being an unwelcome guest at Disney. And speaking of unwelcome guests, remember Richard McGuire, the guy who touched off a full-scale manhunt when it was discovered that he was trying to shelter on Discovery Island during the pandemic? This guy represents the absolute pinnacle of Disney urban exploring gone wrong. Not only because of the scope of what this guy was trying to do and the huge police response it caused, but also because this guy's motivations for trespassing on Discovery Island were, well, absolutely bananas. On the surface, McGuire's escapade looked like a straightforward illegal camping trip that went south. But when people delved deeper into McGuire and his viewpoints, it turned out that McGuire's other motive in exploring Discovery Island was to uncover the truth around what he believed were some super secret genetic experiments happening on the island. It would appear McGuire thought Disney was endeavoring to create some sort of part robot, part living bird hybrid beast, and that they were using Discovery Island as their evil lair for these activities. Let's set Richard McGuire aside for a sec and talk about the motivations of Disney explorers. That is, the ones that we're assuming are at least moderately sane. What makes venturing into decaying Disney infrastructure so alluring? Why do they do it? And more importantly, why does there seem to be such a big audience for it? I can speak from a little bit of experience here. Certainly nothing as adventurous or over the top as Hooten Chief or Matt Sanswa. But I do have some of my own footage of a hotel room at Disney's All-Star Sports Resort while the rooms were under renovation. I was staying at the resort during this renovation, and one day while I was strolling around the resort, I saw that workers had left the door open on one of the ground floor rooms that was undergoing renovation. I didn't really think about it. I just slipped inside the room, took my phone out, and started filming. It wasn't very remarkable, but I loved that I had a chance to capture footage of the old school sports wallpaper in the room just before it disappeared forever. It felt important somehow at that moment, but why? Why was I so compelled to do that? I think there are several factors at play, not just for me, but for all Disney urban explorers and their audiences. First off, there's the thrill of the forbidden. There's an undeniable thrill in accessing spaces that are meant to be off limits. It's a taste of the rebellious, even if the primary aim is documentation rather than destruction. That thrill is all the more powerful when you're in an area known for as tight of control as that of a Disney park. Then there's the Disney image itself. Disney meticulously crafts its image as a place of eternal joy and perfection. They work incredibly hard to maintain this image, even as impossible as it is. 
Documented footage of abandoned Disney spaces shatter that image, exposing vulnerability and the passage of time. That contrast is both jarring and strangely enticing. There's also the fact that Disney Urban Exploring evokes a sense of nostalgia, but with an edge. For many, abandoned Disney areas aren't just about decay. They evoke powerful memories from childhood visits, now infused with a slight melancholy when you see them abandoned and in disrepair. Urban exploration and watching the footage of these explorers represents a way to recapture a moment in time, but from a bittersweet angle. There's also the lost history factor. Disney has a long and sometimes controversial history. Abandoned spaces can become emblems of projects left behind, decisions made and remade. This fuels a desire to piece together the lost history that Disney itself might not be willing to share. Ultimately, the obsession with Disney urban exploring stems from its ability to offer experiences that a regular Disney visit never could. It's thrill-seeking, nostalgia-tinged, and a little bit macabre, all wrapped up in the unique magic of the Disney brand.